it is time now. Okay. Nisha is back in the kitchen with a delicious dish that you can have on the table in 30 minutes. We're just going to tuck in. Tuck in. And let you crack I'm on. <laughs> I've waited all morning for this. And it's not disappointing. Is it not disappointing? Oh, oh that's fantastic. Okay, Meatballs this time. Mm. Yeah. So if you nice. like a meatball, we're in. I do. And meatballs are a big thing in India. So this is, so, so just to tell you, this is a Madras curry and that he's got a, a little bit more heat. Do you feel that? A little Never bit. hot. A little it's more, bit. It's more massively flavoursome than yeah. hot. Yeah, that's... Uh, no, a I think it's it. like heaven. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Because we don't do... I don't do chilli, really, mm. but this is just a bit more warm. So that's what the sort of defining features of a madras are. You want that, that deep, rich colour. It's so good. Um, but what's so great about this, it's on the tomato base, so it's really healthy. There is no cream in this, there is no ghee. Really? We start it with a little bit of oil, onion, ginger, garlic, but I'm going to go into the sauce in a second, so let's make the meatballs first. OK. Yeah. You could just use those meatballs that you get in you know supermarkets yeah. that are ready made but what's great about making it with your own mince so this is mince lamb which is what you tend to use in india because india is full of in fact goats no sheep mm. goats yeah um, and it's a nice rich meat and and mincing is a really common way of treating meat because you can't hang because of the heat in in the east full stop you can't hang meat to tenderize it mm. so what they do is they mechan mechanically tenderize it by grinding it right and so that's why mince is a very very common ingredient so what sort of you're buying it here what yeah. sort of quality are you looking at well you want to honestly because i'm so passionate about healthy curries curries you should be able to have twice a day you know we a billion people do honestly yeah you should be able to have it for breakfast feel and not feel it so get, just get a low fat quantity uh, you know a low fat kind of meat pork is great as well i usually like to make these with pork because it's just such an amenable meat and it takes the spices so well okay so into this we add so anything that you've got i always say this sort of those brown powdered spices that you have what you want is you don't want to bite into the meatball and just think you're in a Scandinavian cafe somewhere. You want it to take you east even in the meatball itself. Right. Yeah. So I'm going cumin powder mm -hmm. because cumin powder is brilliant at, oh, taking the kind of, it sounds ridiculous, but that kind of meaty taste away from meat. Oh, right. I, I know, that, that just sounds dreadful. But you want, you don't want it to just be lamby. You want it to be... Have something in there. Perfumed, uh -huh. exactly. Coriander powder, that's a beautiful herby kind of perfumed aromat mm -hmm. so we add those in now the really great thing about these meatballs i'm just keeping an eye on those onions is that you can hide in here all kinds of veg so you could put chopped spinach in there you could put parsley at, which this, is stage, love at this at this stage oh, no. i put coriander stalks parsley stalks coriander stalks thyme whatever you have get them into the meatballs anything that gives those meatballs a bit of extra flavor so you mix that all in mm -hmm. a little bit of salt ideally so let me just put a bit in and we then form our meatballs. So what I'm very passionate about, I think people are afraid of cooking with meatballs because you think they're going to fall apart. Mm. Don't you? you think, mm -hmm. do I need to fry them beforehand? Do I mm -hmm. need to steam them, all of that? They are the most, <laughs> they're the easiest, kindest kind of ingredient in the kitchen. They seem to go a long way. So what we're going to do, we've got the meatballs, set them aside, don't even need to refrigerate them. Honestly, they're fine. Right. Nice patch. You don't need breadcrumbs. They're completely gluten-free. Yeah. Into the pan we go. Our foundations for a nice, rich curry, onion, ginger, garlic. Mm -hmm. yep. And we fry them, and I always say it, until they're hot dog brown. Because that is how you're going to get that sweetness. Yeah. All curries have got to have a lovely layer of sweetness and salt, etc. So, lovely and brown. It also gives you a great colour. If you were making a korma where you want it to be silky and velvety and cream, get them just below brown. But here we go. So, onion, ginger and garlic. Now we're going to form the basis of this. I'm using red peppers. I thought I could taste that in there. Yeah. So and you don't have to. And this is... No, I like it. I like it. I like it. I have to say, in India, very rarely would we cook with red peppers. You'd have it in a jal frazi. But I'm putting them in here because I just think these curries are brilliant ways of getting loads of veg. Mm. You know, you are, you've got your five a day in one dish. And it's so inoffensive mm. <laughs> and it's so stealthy. So red peppers are a great way because they bring a bit more sweetness, but they also bring that lovely kind of tannin bitterness as mm. well, which is another thing you want in a madras. You want a little bit of acidity. So you could add a bit of vinegar or tamarind, but I think red peppers gives us that in a really simple way. OK, so we've got our red peppers. We want them to just begin to soften. And then we go in with our spicy. And this is why I'm really passionate, because it's very simple. First of all, I'm going to add some of this. This is fenugreek, dried fenugreek leaf. Oh, I think right. I've cooked for you with this before. Yeah, you have. You only need about a teaspoon. I haven't got that one. I smell, need to get that smell one. Smell that. It's interesting. 
So it's... I bought it because of you. Did you? My really? entire cupboard wow. is because of you, <laughs> pretty much. Does your house smell because yeah. of me? It smells beautiful. Do you know what's crazy about that, though, Phil? So you smell it and it smells like hay. Yes, mm, it does. Doesn't it? It just yeah. smells floral. It smells gentle. It smells of just, you know, straw or hay. You cook it and it's, it's kind of radioactive. It, it suddenly emits these enormous curry house flavours. That smell that you can smell is it's because of this fenugreek leaf. It is absolutely the most alchemical ingredient that you could find. Wow. And, and most of, and I always say this about fenugreek, most of it is on your nose. Most of what it does is to your nose, but that's like coffee or anything, isn't yeah. it? A lot of it is through the nose. So fenugreek so. goes in and you've got that lovely punchy kind of base. Then we go in simply our two <laughs> real backbones of any curry. So that's turmeric, mm -hmm. which gives you the earthiness, the mother of all curry, chilli powder, which is the father of all curry, and we go a little bit heavier with that, and garam masala. That's it, three spices. Get yourself a big bag of garam masala. Mm -hmm. And in this is things like anise, cloves, um, you know, cinnamon, cardamom, all of that. Um, and we stir that in. So we've got our spice base then, and then you can begin to smell that already. But you can see, you know, I've got this lovely thick sauce. There is no... Ooh, I'm splashing around. So you add... Your, what's giving you your sauce then? Once you've done that, you're adding I'm water add, to that. So what we do is we add tomato. Yeah. So tin tomato, best thing, chopped in tomato. There you go. And then to that, you're going to just water it down. And then we need to season it, so we're going to add a bit of salt. And always think, whenever you're cooking with tomatoes, you think about adding a bit of sugar mm. just to bring the natural sweetness out. But can you see how already I'm in the realms of those beautiful brown yeah. curries? And it's taken me minutes, hasn't it? Again, yeah. lifetime. So a bit of salt, a bit of sugar to taste. But please don't forget either of those. They are important. Do you cook the meatballs in it now? Do you put them in and then...? Yeah, so now what we do, we end up with this. So after about 10 minutes, you end up with this. I'm going to add a bit more veg, so a bit more spinach. So you'll see those yeah. lovely sort of silken ribbons of green. That's the spinach. Then we take the meatballs that we have and we simply drop them in. But you need to make sure that it is bubbling. And, and as, how long will they take to cook through? Well, on honestly, there? you're talking about sort of 10 minutes. Not on a high, honestly, it's incredible. And if you put a lid on, so let's just drop them in, cover them with the sauce, lid on. It's 10, so amazing, 15 minutes. It? And you end up with this. Oh, voilà. There you are. It there you go. So Thank beautiful. you. It's Delicious, as you. always.